So iOS 14 is pretty popular because it allows people to change the icons of their apps. Yes, I have been training my entire life for this moment. Yes, this counts as milking the series more. And yes, I would like you to press the subscribe button. These are easily my favorite icons that I've made so far. 3D app icons just make so much sense and they're also the ones I'll probably use the most. So I'm excited for you to see them. First, I had to choose some apps to redesign. It was easy this time because my mail app has 30,000 notifications on it. I mean, that's just disease at this point. I don't have an excuse. That's just really not acceptable. But if you make a shortcut for it, it doesn't show the notifications, and that's probably a good thing. First, it's always important to have reference. What I always do is download an image, drag it into Blender, and then press Alt-G and Alt-R, which resets their position and rotation. I started with a cube, which I beveled the corners of to match the image, and then the borders to give it that rounded look. I also used a similar technique for the envelope shape, except I used a plane instead of a cube. To bevel the vertices around the edges of the plane, you'll need to use Control shift b instead of the normal Control b One more tip that makes the icons look better is under Render Properties to set Look to Medium High Contrast and View Transform to Standard instead of Filmic. This makes it way easier to see the details and colors when it's scaled down to app size. Speaking of tips, do you know what this is? That's what 420 Blender tips looks like in physical form. I redid all of my tips from all these videos and put them into one giant document. It took me a stupid amount of time to do. It's like 20,000 words. And you can get it for only $10 in the description below. I'm trying to get a new computer to upload more and I would really appreciate it if you were to purchase this. To create the rest of the envelope, I duplicated the plane and used the knife tool to cut based off of the reference image. After putting a solidify modifier on and scaling it properly, it was time to start working on the materials. For the app background, I used a gradient texture plugged into a color ramp, which I colored based off of the reference image. You can't use the normal E eyedropper for color ramps, you'll have to use the <laughs> uh, tip number 368. Alt E. Then click to add stops and sample colors at the same time. Then press enter when you're done. For the envelope, I just used a basic white material with some emphasized ambient occlusion mixed in. This makes the shadows between each section more emphasized, which is really a big deal on something as small as an app icon. Now the cool part is we can edit it however we want, we could change the colors of the background, switch the materials on the objects, change the materials entirely, it's really up to you. I went through a few iterations but settled on this orange color and tilted the envelope a little bit to add some more perspective. Next I actually have to put this icon on my phone. To do this, you'll need to download the Shortcuts app on your phone from the App Store. Once it's downloaded, click the plus icon to add a new shortcut. Add action, and in search, type open app. Click choose, then choose the app you want to open. Next, click the three dots, add to home screen. Choose an icon and a name, and then you're done. How incredibly convenient is that? It's cool and all, but wouldn't this be easier if people could just change their app icons? I mean, it seems like it's possible to have icons changed, so I don't know, I don't know, man. Seems like a lot of steps saved. Either way, here's the mail icon I made in its natural habitat. I love it, it's incredible, and I finally don't look like a degenerate with 30,000 emails, even though in reality that's just one of my four addresses. Although I was tempted to just ride off victoriously into the sunset with this glorious icon design under my belt, I knew it would be way cooler if I could just redesign a whole bunch of apps in a 3D style. So next I need another app to redesign, so I thought I would check the latest video's top comment to see what people would be interested in. It was YouTube by a long shot, so that's kind of what I decided on. I'm going to post part two of the series next week. Whatever gets top comment on this video, I will be redesigning on Friday. I don't care what it is. I'm immensely worried about this. Please don't get me in trouble. For the YouTube icon, I decided to reuse the shape of the background. I mean, why fix it if it's already broken? I outlined the shape of the YouTube logo using as little geometry as possible. I subdivided it to make the corner smooth, mirrored it so I only had to work with one corner, solidified it so it's thick, I tried to bevel it, but to be honest, the geometry just wasn't having it. I considered putting effort into it for like a split second, but then I was struck across the head with an infinitely better idea. What's the one time you've seen a 3D YouTube logo where it didn't need to have beveled edges? That's right, YouTube play buttons. After waking up from utter shock, I realized how cool would it be if there was like a silver play button version of the YouTube app. Come to think of it, it could be gold. It could be diamond. It could actually be a real thing, I feel like. Imagine the absolute 
ego people would have if their entire app turned a certain way when they reached a certain subscriber count. Immediately, I dug into the background with this YouTube shape. I used a circle object and turned it into a triangle to create the actual play part in the center. For materials, I put on a brush metal texture, adjusted the roughness a little, and it turned out great. For the center, all I needed was a mirror-like surface, since that's what they're like in real life. Real quickly, let's see how it looks in gold. For the silver metal material, you can't just use the hue saturation node, because that only emphasizes or changes existing colors. For monochromatic things like this, we need a mix RGB node and set the operation to color. This actually mixes the chosen color onto the texture. If we give it that gold hue, it looks pretty good. Next is the mirror part in the center, and according to reference, this should also have a gold tint. With this material though, we can just change the color and it updates accordingly. Now what if it was diamond? <laughs> well, maybe that's for another episode. It feels so weird to say, ever since I was like two years old, I always wondered what it was like. I really gotta hand it to my viewers, you know? These guys are out here bringing the most insightful things to the table. What would I do if I didn't have you guys watching me create Yikes Mario at 4 a.m.? So here's the final results. <laughs> I hope you love them as much as I do. Be sure to look out for the next episode, and I'll see you next time. Take it easy. Bye.